Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for August 2017. CoreLogic's Combined Capital Cities Index recorded another rise in July, taking dwelling values 1.5% higher over the month to be 10.5% higher over the past 12 months. The strong month-on-month -month results was largely attributable to a 3.1% increase across Melbourne, which was now recording the highest annual growth rate with values 15.9% higher. Canberra also showed a substantial gain in dwelling values over the month, with the index value up 2.4%. In fact, Canberra is now showing the second highest annual pace of capital gains after Melbourne, pushing Sydney to the third place on the capital gains leagues tables with an annual growth rate of 12.4%. While growth rates remain high in these cities, there's been some moderation in the trend rate of growth since the first quarter of 2017, especially in the Sydney housing market. Sydney's quarterly growth trend has eased from 5% over the March quarter to 2.2% at the end of July. Melbourne and Canberra conditions have been more resilient to a slowdown though, with a rolling quarterly growth rate holding reasonably firm around the 5% mark in Canberra and 4% in Melbourne. Other capital cities aren't showing the same level of exuberance though. Dwelling values continue to slip lower in Perth and Darwin, and were also slightly down in Brisbane during July. The silver lining around the weak housing market conditions in these areas is that housing affordability is far less problematic relative to the larger cities. Better housing affordability can be seen in first home buyer trends, with activity across this segment of the marketplace proportionally higher than other states and trending upwards. While capital gain conditions remain diverse, so too does housing turnover. Broadly, the number of transactions across the combined capitals has reduced by 4.3% over the past 12 months, and annual transaction numbers are now 16% lower compared with this cycle peak, which was back in mid-2014. The largest year-on-year -year falls in settled sales have been in Brisbane and Melbourne, with sales down 9.7% and 7.6% respectively. At the other end of the spectrum, Hobart and Darwin have both seen a lift in turnover by about 11% over the past year. Housing turnover is being affected by a range of factors, including inventory shortages, tighter credit policies, higher mortgage rates and lower consumer sentiment. However, many of these factors vary substantially from region to region. Another facet of the housing market is that houses are substantially outperforming units. The Combined Capital City Index shows that over the year, house values have risen by 10.9% while unit values have increased by 7.3%. The performance differential is most significant in Melbourne and Brisbane, which are the two marketplaces where concerns around an oversupply of unit construction are most pronounced. According to the CoreLogic Hedonic Home Value Index, house values in Melbourne are 17.2% higher over the year, compared with a 4.6% rise in unit values. While in Brisbane, house values are 2.6% higher, while unit values have actually reduced by 1.4% over the past 12 months. The weak performance can probably be attributed to both higher unit supply levels around the inner city regions, which has led to tighter credit policies from lenders and heightened caution from investors in these areas. Adelaide's housing market has continued to trend steadily higher, with dwelling values 1.1% higher over the month to be 2.5% higher over the year to date. Dwelling values are rising only slightly faster than inflation and wages, which is provided for very affordable home prices, but not a great deal of wealth creation compared with markets like Sydney and Melbourne. In a positive sign, the average selling time is reduced compared with a year ago, indicating a strengthening selling environment, which could support some additional price pressures in the marketplace. Slower growth conditions, at least at a macro level, are being brought about by several factors. Firstly, it's clear that investment in the housing market is now tapering. Growth in investment-related credit peaked in November last year, and since that time, the pace of lending for investment purposes has been moderating. Considering investment activity is heavily skewed towards the Sydney housing market, less activity across this segment is likely to have more impact compared with the other capital cities. Investor appetite is being dampened by higher mortgage rates, as well as tighter credit policies and low rental yields. Since bottoming out in November last year, discounted variable mortgage rates for investment purposes have risen by 35 basis points, and they're now 60 basis points higher than the same product for owner-occupiers. Mortgage rates for interest-only terms have also moved higher in response to the March announcements from APRA that Australian lenders should limit interest-only lending to 30% of new settlements. These two factors have created a substantial disincentive for real estate investors. 
Add to this the fact that rental yields slipped to new record lows in Sydney and Melbourne during July, and it becomes clear why investment credit growth is trending down. While these factors are working to slow the housing market, there are other factors that are stoking housing demand. Population growth has rebounded higher, creating more demand for housing. Based on data to the end of 2016, the number of net overseas migrants into Australia was up by 16.5%, with 76% of these overseas migrants arriving in New South Wales and Victoria. Interstate migration flows are also changing, which is impacting on housing demand. The net outflow of residents from New South Wales is now gathering some pace, while net migration into Queensland is the highest in 10 years. The rise in interstate migration is likely to be a key driver of housing demand, particularly across the southeast corner of Queensland, while the outflow from New South Wales is probably another reason the housing market is starting to slow down. Labor market conditions have also tightened during 2017. The past five years saw 75% of Australian jobs created in Victoria and New South Wales, which has supported the high rate of population growth in these regions. More recently, jobs growth has become more broadly spread, picking up across most states and territories. Another factor to consider in New South Wales and Victoria is the effect of new first home buyer stamp duty concessions. As of July 1st, first home buyers in New South Wales were exempt from stamp duty when purchasing a home under $650,000 and stamp duty is discounted up to $800,000. In Victoria, stamp duty exemptions became available for properties purchased with a price tag of less than $600,000 with concessions on stamp duties up to $750,000. While it's still too early to gauge the extent of first home buyer reactions, historically first home buyers have been very responsive to these types of incentives. Overall, growth in residential property values remains healthy, but at a combined capital city level, it's not quite as strong as what it was a year ago. Although it's anticipated the market will continue to see values rise, it's expected that the rate of growth will continue to slow throughout the remainder of 2017. Of course, the latest research and updates of the housing market can always be found at the CoreLogic website, located at www.corelogic.com.au.